When you're choosing a pocket to make for a journal, that choice can be daunting. There are so many types, do you sometimes feel stuck? Whether it's a simple pocket from a book page like this, or something more complex with multiple tiers, having a few go-to designs might be helpful for you. In this week's video I'm making three pockets and sharing tips on which book pages to use. This channel is all about making things simple and getting more value from your craft supplies. If journals and paper are also your passion, then hit the subscribe button and that notification bell because I have lots more tips and videos to come. And the first one we're making is a simple one like this, which we decorated with papers and left with a lovely tatty edge. So you can use your vintage book pages. This is an English dictionary from the 1930s. The pages are gloriously aged and just wonderful to play with. But this single tier pocket is also good for glossy pages like this. We can make use of pretty pictures on the pages like this. Or these flowers. And all we need to make this is a pair of scissors a corner rounder, optional, a bone folder and some glue. I have a fuller step-by-step -step video on all of the pockets that I'm making today and I'll link those in the description box down below. I start by tearing the paper down to size. And here I'm just folding and tearing to keep the top half of the page. and then the simple folding and snipping begins. Folding down one side and then across the bottom here. And the bone folder just helps those creases to be sharp. Folding the front flap over, keeping this flower in prominent position. And now I make a few simple snips, just here and here. Snipping a V out of the bottom and taking off the corner. That's all of the snipping, now for some gluing. I run some glue along this tab and fold it down. And a little bit more on the outside of this tab. Sticking this side flap down and then adding some glue to that so that I can fold the front into position. And it really is that easy. What I like about this design is you can use book pages that are more readily available. And here's one I made earlier. Or still make one from vintage pages that might be in your stash. I like to choose colours on a page that go with the rest of a spread, like this. I've attached it with washi and used this picture on the left to inspire the whole design. And there's plenty of space for extra inserts in the pocket. Hmm, that's quite a chubby little journal. I find lots of books in charity shops, like this one. And at the time I was mesmerised by pictures like this. But the placement of the images on the page really means it's not great for pockets. Whereas this one would be perfect. But I love it so much, I still can't bear to cut it up. This book by Henry Terry is also a thing of beauty, but the pictures are too big to really work for a pocket. So this has become a source of pages, a go-to for making pockets. The paper texture is perfect and it's thick enough to fold 
as well as to watercolour with my beautiful Arteza paints. I splosh paint on these monochrome pages and I make use of images like this. So let's make a two-tier pocket with this page on the right. I tear it out carefully and I'm going to feature this image. And to help you find these books, because there are others in the series, this one on geography has a very similar layout. The paper texture's the same and you get images and black and white. So for making pockets yourself that might be one to look out for. Here's one from a book of birds that I made a few weeks ago. Decorated with tiny pieces of scrapbook paper. And here's another example with a lovely image and a bit of washi. Using a monochrome book page for this meant that the butterfly and the flower could be the focus point for the spread. So I'm making a two-tier pocket with this right-hand side on the front. I'm making a little flap on the side and then folding the page over. There's a link in the description box to a video with a step-by-step -step process for this. I glue the front onto that long flap. And I'm just tidying up at the top. And I really want the whole of this butterfly image to show. So I'm making an adjustment to the front of the pocket, just keeping things real. That is trimming it down on the front so that the fold is in a better place. So now we have a two-tier pocket with a beautiful butterfly on display. It's fun to use your washi to add a bit of colour. You might choose black and white or a focal point like this. My all-time favourite pocket is a three-tier pocket like this. It's quick and easy to make and fun to stamp and paint. You can use your scraps to add some colour as well as your matte or your glossy book pages like this. I made one in this journal as part of this journal spread. I decorated the tiers and made this mini one as well. And for this pocket in particular, I really like to add paint. I choose a white paper with text so that this yellow and green really pop through. But you could also use pages like this. It's matte and thicker paper. Where the text at the top of the page can be a feature on your pocket. Lots of lovely pages to play with. But today I'm going to make a three tier pocket from this huge weighty tome. 
The paper's fairly thin, but that does make it easier to fold. I tear a page out carefully. and make a fold down the longer side. Fold over the front and make a crease. And trimming the corners at this stage. I fold up the front and now I want to make a cut. Using this vertical fold as a guide for my scissors. And if I can just get it the right way round here, I can fold up and make the third tier. And this little box here is a place that gets a snip in the form of two V's, just here and here. I glue that little piece down and run some glue on this upper flap, pressing the front down and then adding glue to flap number two. Sticking that in place creates pockets here and here. Gluing this lower flap and our three tier pocket is done. One, two and three ready to receive your photos or be used in a journal spread. So those are my three go-to pockets, simple, easy and fun, and making use of our existing journal supplies. And take a look at my playlists if you want to see journal spreads like this and a few more pocket ideas like this. In the meantime, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell and I'll see you next week.